Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my in-depth review of the new Space Wolf Codex. Came out today, I'm excited. So, just to recap, um, I think the Codex is actually pretty good. It's pretty on, on par with the Space Marine Codex as far as points cost goes. And today I will be covering the HQ section. And as I mentioned in the last one, the new Force Organization chart, minimum two HQs, which I think are going to be Rune Priests. If you, for good list, I think Rune Priests will be the good two basis ones. But you can take up to six HQs in a list, and they've moved Mr. Logan Grimnar to a Lord of War like they did with Gospel Thraka. So I'm going to go on record right now and state my prediction, Mephiston, Lord of War. And two codices, Blood Angels, Lord of War, Mephiston. That's my prediction. So we'll start off. Uh, with the HQs. Obviously I went over the Warlord traits last uh, section and I went over the relics and besides that pretty much everything is kind of the same as the last codex other than points. I'll go over the points of upgrades and various things but uh, yeah we'll start off with the, the the general HQ. The Wolf Lord. Right? He is just a base HQ. He's a great low cost so he comes in 105 points which he used to be 100 so it's a 5 point increase and, uh, but it's, he's still a good choice. I think he's still a good choice. Um, because 105 points for an HQ, you can take up to six. You know, it's not bad. So he comes with power armor, bolt pistol, chain sword, frag grenades, crack grenades, belt of rust. And, uh, over 98, what is the belt of rust? Because that sounds new to me. These new codices, I like them, because they have these nice page things. Uh, Belt of Russ, 4-up Invol. Can't go wrong there. 4-up Invol save, it's great. He doesn't have a Terminal Warrior, but he has acute senses, they shall know no fear, counterattack, and independent character. Basically, most of the army has counterattack, as Space Wolves do. So, great choice. If you want a, a um, just a general, you know, a, a low-point HQ, the Wolf Lord is a great choice. And uh, he can take Fenrisian Wolves uh, up to two for eight points each. And his stat line is uh, Weapon Skill 6, Ballistic Skill 5, Strength 4, Toughness 4, 3 Wounds, Initiative 5, 4 Attacks, Leadership 10, 3 Up Save. Pretty standard, Wolf Lord. He can replace his Power Armor with Runic Armor. And Runic Armor in this one, it's like Terminator Armor, but it's a 6 Up Invol, I'm pretty sure. So it's a 2 Up Armor with a 6-up invol, if I remember correctly. Yes, 6-up invol save. And he has a 4 so he already has a 4-up invol. So, but if you upgrade him to the power, runic armor, he also has a belt of rust. So then he'll have a 4-up invol, 2-up save, 4-up invol. Great combination. Uh, you can take, you know, any of the relics, melee weapons, ranged weapons. You can take terminator armor. Um... I prefer, I'd actually probably take Runic Armor for 20 points as opposed to Terminator Armor for 40. Because he already has a Belt of Rust, so he already has a 4-up Invol. So might as well get him a 4-up Invol and a 2-up save, right? And uh, if a Terminator Armor is not taken, Wolf Lord may take a Thunderwolf mount for 50 points. So you can have a Lord on Wolf. Can't go wrong there. Now he's running around the table for 155 points. You have, well, I guess you can take Runic Armor. Yep, you can take Runic Armor, a Thunderwolf. And him, for 175 points, you have a Wolf Lord running around with a toughness, you know, five. Can't go wrong there. Great choice, great choice. Up next, Ragnar Blackmane. I haven't always been the biggest fan of Ragnar Blackmane, but he's okay. So, but Ragnar Blackmane got a huge decrease in points. He's now 195 points. I'm pretty sure he was like 140 in the previous codex. That's pretty nice. He has pretty much the same stat line as before. And uh, he can take from Region Wolves as well, but he has Power Armor, Bolt Pistol, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, Melt of Bombs, and a Belt of Rust. His Warlord trait is Saga of the Warrior Born. Now I already covered some war Warlord traits in the other one. He also has the Relic of the Fang, which is a Frost Fang. Strength plus one, AP three, melee rending, mastercrafted. Not bad. He's not bad close combat. As I said, the Warlord traits, the special rules, a lot of these things have to do with close combat, so you want to get a really strong close combat guy, run him around, challenge everyone, and slaughter, and just have a great time. Special rules, acute senses, they shall no fear, counterattack, independent character, and rage. He also has incredible reflexes. He can reroll a single failed saving throw in each assault phase. So again, he's, he's built for close combat. Insane bravado. Ragnar must issue and accept the challenge whenever possible. And uh, 
War Howl, Ragnar and all models with Space Wolf faction in his unit have Fury Race Charge special rule. Options can take up two Fenrisian Wolves for eight points each. As I said, he's 195 points. Again, great selection choice. Now we have tons of room for the HQs. Ragnar Blackmane is a great choice. Back when he, there were, I wouldn't take him if there were two selections, basically. Next, we have Harold Deathwolf. He's a lord of a wolfkin. See? He's on the wolf. So basically, you just kind of build him, you upgrade your wolf guy. And he has power armor. Uh, his stat line is weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 6, strength 5, toughness 5, 4 wounds, initiative 5, 5 attacks. 5 attacks! Ooh, that's crazy. Leadership 10, 3 plus save. He can take up to 2 Fenrisian Wolves for 8 points each. Power armor, bolt pistol, frost axe, frag grenades, crack grenades, storm shield, thunder wolf mount. And his slug of the wolfkin is a warlord trait. And his lord of the wolfkin, all friendly models, all friendly space wolf cavalry and beast models are, that are within 12 inches of him, use his leadership value. Unless their own is higher. And he also has Mantle of the Ice Troll King, which means he's unaffected by all pyromancy, psychic powers, and all flamer weapons, as defined by the rulebook. Pretty cool stuff. 190 points. So not bad. He's pretty expensive. But if you run uh, Wolf, Thunderwolf Cavalry, I think he's going to be the way to go. Mm -hmm. Up next, obviously, Kenneth Wolfborn. Now, Kenneth Wolfborn also got... Uh, he didn't get a change in price, actually. I think he was the only HQ that didn't get a change in price. He is 185 points, just as before. He's weapon skill 5, but skill 2, strength 2, strength 5, toughness 5, 3 wounds, initiative 5, 5 attacks, leadership 9, 3 plus save. His warlord trait saga of the wolfkin. He has two wolf claws, which I'm pretty sure are just like lightning claws. It's just a name for them. They have the wolves and the bears and the wolfy bears and berry wolves. Um, let's see. Are they different? Wolf Claw, Strength plus 1, AP3, Melee, Shred, Specialist Weapon. Pretty standard. And he has a Q Senses, Nation Alone Fear, Counterattack, Independent Character, Rampage, Wolf Born of the Wolves. Cannons Wolf Born and Alphan Region Wolves and Cyber Wolves in his unit. Reroll, fail to hit rolls in close combat during a solve phase in which they charge. In combat, he can take two wolves, eight points each. Cool. So again, if you want to take a lot of wolves, you want to take Thunderwolf Cavalry, he's the way to go. Up next, this is my favorite HQ, the Rune Priest. Now here's why. Rune Priests are now 60 points each. 60 points for a level 1 Mastery Level Psyker. And if you roll on the uh, the Space Wolves Psychic Power chart, you automatically get Living Lightning, because it's a primary power, and that's pretty sweet. They can take Bio Biomancy, Demonology, Divination, Telekinesis, and Tempestus. I take Tempestus. Because then they'll get Living Lightning and possibly Jaws running around the field having fun. For 60 points, you can upgrade into a level Mastery 2, for 25 points. So for 85 points, and the thing is, he doesn't come with a Psychic Hood base. They took that away, and it's an extra 10 points for Psychic Hood. So if you want a Psychic Hood, Master Level 2 Psyker, 95 points. But you can take 6 of those. That would be fun. He has Power Armor, Bolt Pistol, Runic Axe, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, Cute Senses, Counter Attack, Additional No Fear, Independent Character, Psychic Master Level 1. He can take Runic Armor for 25 points. He can replace the Runic Axe with Runic Sword or Runic Staff for free. And the rest are all pretty standard. So he can take Terminator armor as well. I'd take him base. I would. I like Runic. I like Rune Priest base. I would take uh, a Rune Priest, Mastery Level Two, and a Psychic Hood for 95 points. And I would take two or three of them, because in the new crazy psychicness of Warhammer 40k Seventh Edition, these guys will save your butt. And also they have some cool psychic powers. I like them. Up next. The craziness of the crazy. Ninjal, Nyal, Stormcaller. By the way, I should mention, I uh, already said that the uh, Logan Grimnar is a lore war. So up next, Nyal, Ninjal, Nyal, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry, but I was going to make fun of the name. Stormcaller, he's the Tempest of that walks. And he's 180 points. 180 points. He used to be 245. Pfft, huge drop in price. I like it. The reason why I dropped in price, he's also kind of weaker. He lost, uh, as I mentioned in my previous uh, part, they kind of took away a lot of the special rules that made books yeah, really different. They're, I think they're trying to streamline 40k. So, um, that's the thing. I think they're going to try to streamline 40k. And but he, So he lost his... Uh, he lost his cool storm. So none of the storm. Also, the storm, though cool as it was, it really did complicate a game and slow down the game. And it was really annoying. To play against. So he doesn't have the storm anymore. Same stat line as before. And he's runic armor, bolt pistol, fragrance, crack grenades, psychic hood. 
Additional no fear, acute senses, counterattack, independent character. Psychic Mastery level 3. 3 psychic powers per turn. He can take for, uh, He's Lord of Tempest, his Ninjal Stormcall can reroll a single failed psychic test each turn when attempting to manifest psychic powers from the Tempestus Discipline. So that's why his cool bonuses. He used to be also nasty for re removing people, like for denying the witch. And uh, I think he can reroll one failed deny the witch per turn. Uh, he's a psyker, and he gets powers from biomancy, demonology, divination, telekinesis, and pestis. He could replace his runic armor, frag, and crack grenades with terminator armor for free. So if you want to take him in terminator armor, feel free. I think the standard model comes in terminator armor. I could be wrong, but I thought he came in terminator armor. And he has Relic of the Fang Nightwing. It can unleash Nightwing as a shooting attack with the following profile. 24 inch range, strength 3, AP dash, assault D6. Okay. It's his, uh, his bird. Staff of the Stormcaller, strength plus 2, AP 4, melee, concussive, force, weird bane. So he still has a force weapon. That's nice. And uh, weird bane, staff of the Stormcaller grants weirder, the wielder adamantium will. So that's plus 1 to deny the witch rolls. So now he's, he's probably going to be rolling three, 4 ups, you know, to, to deny a witch roll. And in addition, he can reroll a single de fail deny the witch attempt per turn. Cool. So yeah, again, he's not bad at all. He got much cheaper. I think he's still a solid points cost, uh, a solid HQ. He doesn't get his storms, but who, he's going to still be really good without his storms. He can take psychic powers galore. He will be what helps you deny the witch of your opponent. If you're against armies like Grey Knights, Demons, he's going to be your key. And I still think he's a solid choice. Up next, standard Wolf Priest, 110 points. Wolf Priest, uh, he used to be 100, so I think he went up, yeah, he went up in cost to 110. And uh, he's not bad. Again, I like him. He's not uh, not bad, not a bad choice. But uh, he has Power Armor, Bolt Pistol, Crozius Arcanum, which is, let's go on page 97. Crozius Arcanum, uh, Strength Plus 2, AP 4, Melee Concussive. Frag and crack grenades, healing bombs, which are on page 98. Healing bombs, B A L M, not B O M B. Uh, he has a feel no pain in his unit. All the things have feel no pain six up. They're really big on giving feel no pain six ups now. I don't really feel find a use for them. Wolf amulet, page 98. Uh, converts four up invul save. So he's a four up invul save. He has power armor, and he gives a six up feel no pain to a squad. He has the Oath of War. The Wolf Priest can nominate one unit type at the beginning of the game, for example, infantry or monster creature. If he does so, the Wolf Priest has the preferred enemy special rule against that model's that type. And he can take pretty much all the same upgrades as the other guys. So, cool stuff. 110 points. Next up, Ulrich, the Slayer, Wolf High Priest. So he's basically, you know, the better form of the Wolf Priest. He's 145 points. Um, he used to be at 180, so got a great drop in price, 35 points. Same stats, same war gear as the previous guy, but he also has Slayer's Oath. So Ulrich the Slayer and all friendly units within Space Marines Wolf Action within 6 inches have the preferred enemy special rule. Just preferred enemy. So that's great. So he might be a cheap point, if you really have a few points, like 150 points to put in, put him in. Everyone gets preferred enemy within 6 inches. Keep him huddled in a squad around a bunch of guys. Reroll ones to end the wound. It's awesome to us. He has the Relic of the Fang, Wolf, Hen, Helm of Russ. All friendly units of Space Marine Faction within 12 inches of Ulrich have the Stubborn Special Rule as well. That's great, so no penalty to their leadership. And he's Saga the Beast Slayer. 145 points. Up next, the standard Wolf Guard Battle Leader. 50 points. Uh, Wolf Guard Battle Leaders used to be 70, so again, 20 point decrease. Not bad at all. He's basically a standard Marine, uh, but he has Weapon Skill 5, Ballistic Skill 5, Initiative 5, Leadership 9, 3 attacks. And he can take from Region Wolves, he can take Runic Armor. And he has acute senses, station low fear, counterattack, independent character. So pretty standard guy. Again, if you want a cheap HQ, take him. You know what? He's a great addition to any squad. You have tons of options now for HQ, so you might as well take a bunch. I think the most competitive list for Space Wolves are going to have four or five HQs, especially these cheap guys like Rune Priests and Wolf Guard Battle Leaders. They will really help you and, and just buff everyone around them and help you win the game. So good stuff there. Up next, you can't talk about HQs unless you talk about Bjorn. Bjorn the Fell Handed. Bjorn. Mr. Dreadnought. Bjorn. I don't think he becomes, uh... Nope, he doesn't become... They took away his special rule too. When he dies, he doesn't become an objective anymore. But that's okay. He's now 220 points. Bjorn. Used to be 270. 50 point decrease. 
That's got to be right. Let's check that out. Bjorn's 270 points. I'm just double checking. I don't want to be wrong here. That's a huge drop in price. Bjorn. I love saying Bjorn. Bjorn. People are going to be like, Bjorn. Yep, yeah, used to be 270 points. 50 point decrease. Huge decrease. He's still a term in, uh, in a dreadnought. Weapon still 6. Ballistic still 6. Strength 7. Front armor 13. Side armor 12. Rear armor 10. Initiative 3. 4 attacks. 3 hull points. He has True Claw, which is a built in heavy flamer. Strength 10. AP 2. <laughs> Melee Mastercrafted Shred. So it has a built in heavy flamer. And it's a giant power claw. Strength 10, AP 2, melee mastercrafted shred. So he's re-rolling one hit to hit roll, and he's re-rolling to wound. So he's going to destroy whatever he wants. He's going to be your great anti, you know, if your opponent brings land raiders, he's going to rip it apart. If your opponent brings, like, anything, he's going to rip it apart. So he's going to be good. He has an assault cannon, searchlight, smoke launchers. He's venerable. He's a venerable dreadnought with a front armor 13, and now vehicles are much harder to kill. So he is going to stay alive. I like him. Ancient Tactician, an army that includes Bjorn, has plus one to seize the initiative, so it helps you steal the initiative from your opponent and destroy him. And he also has a five up Invol. So he's venerable, he's a five up Invol, front armor 13, three hull points. He's going to stay alive. So he is going to be a pain in your opponent's side, and now you can take him and a bunch of other HQs. So that's it. That is my in-depth review of the HQs of the new Space Wolves Codex. So, my opinion, I like the HQ section. Six HQs. You can't go wrong with that. There are tons of choices. Tons. What I personally see in a competitive list, Nial, Bjorn, and a bunch of cheap guys. Like room priests or leaders. And that way you buff, you know, you can tons of psychic powers to negate psychic powers. You can just cast as many as you want. You have tons of psychic powers. You're going to have tons of dice. And Bjorn is going to be a pain in your opponent's side because it's going to be hard to kill him. So, thank you so much for watching this part of part two of my in-depth review of the new Space Wolves Codex. Leave a comment in the comment section down below if you feel that I've missed anything or maybe I'm incorrect or anything that you want to add to this conversation. It's really appreciated. And stay tuned to the next part where I will cover the Elite section in greater detail. It's going to be fun. And... So thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Really, this up a lot. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.